Good morning or afternoon everyone. This is Michael from NCY Store. We're going to go and continue on installing our NCY oil cooler set. And I realized I was looking back at the instruction a little bit. It does say it has a, like a different angle for the top here to go onto the adapter. But I'm looking at it and comparing it. See it says it has a little bit indent right there. There's a little groove right there on the chamber or chafer. It's a little bit broken English. You know these are Taiwanese probably writing. But if you look at it. I'm seeing any one of them, they had a little indent area, and they're all the same. You know, they're all just flushed. I don't see any, you know, slant on any of the angle. I'm looking over here too. I don't see any slant inside or outside. Maybe they did away with that and just made it like universal. But I do see a little bit, one side is actually a little bit more indent here, maybe. If that's what they're trying to aim for, perhaps. But I think the picture here... It's talking about there's an inclined dent on the side of it. Meaning, like right there, you know? But if you look at it, it's flat. Don't worry, this thing is twisting with the cap and everything. I put the spring in there, but I'll show you what the default is. And then this one, see, it's still flat surface. There's no smaller side or another side. And then the holes are, I think they're perfectly centered. Uh, maybe this one's a little more smaller, but let's look at the Bonjo bolt here. See, it's pretty wide. It looks like it can go down from any angle, really. So, and then I'm looking for the other side as well. See here, I, I stuffed some tissue here just to prevent it from getting stuff in there because I didn't get a chance to work on it last night to change oil. And besides, I want to actually capture what we're doing in detail for you. So I waited for you guys to the next day over. So you can see there, it's clean. There's no slant. I don't see a slant to you. Do you guys see a slant? You know, I, you know, like the whole, I think it's just a universal fit. I think they're, they probably drawn this out and then they realize, wait, why do we make it just, you know, goes in a way. It's just too much detail. And then I read the instruction further. Uh, it says right here, recommend it to not extend it more than 50 centimeters. And I think we took pretty much the whole length of it. So we avoided that idea. Um, it just gives you an idea of some mounts are like this way where the top of the engine is, where the oil cap is. Ours unfortunately is right here where the stator is. But it's cylinder here, it says to test it out, make sure your oil squirts. Well, we know it does because it actually almost funneled back out to here. So our oil pump is working. And then it says something about, uh, you know, this is what the filter schematic where we're going to do it like. There, it says to use here your donor parts. So you're going to be using your spring, your Christmas tree spring. Because the other spring they give you is actually to put in the adapter. So the spring that you need to take back from here is going to move up to this canister here and it's going to take out your oil filter as well. So these two are the only parts that you can use as a donor. But however, we're just going to replace this aluminum one uh, with the Prima Magnum one, which I'll just show you guys. It'll be easier to show you than explain to you. So here's the package, NCY oil cooler it came in. Gives you a little bit of idea how it's going to be run like. So you can see here, they don't mount it any further than the engine front area, but we went all the way to the, you can see here, we went all the way to extreme. Um, but then another thing is also they mentioned to loop this a little bit of the o-ring It says before sticking back o-ring, please add some lubricant oil more than likely We could probably put motor oil, you know, what I mean just keep it from uh, cracking and stuff like that So we could put a little bit of motor oil on there some clean motor oil or whatever you guys want to use for lube So the instructions are pretty general, you know, what I mean just kind of things here and then You know, it says the attachment photo two here. Our tool doesn't look like this anymore right here See, that, that's the tool that they mentioned. So it doesn't look like this anymore. So this must have been a, pretty much a, an older instruction somewhat. As you change oil filter piece, check standard gauge level. Uh, but we will do this method here where we're going to actually pump our oil. And I realized we have this canister here. We can actually put some oil injection in there and just make sure that there's no leak in the oil system. So hopefully we can pump it and it'll siphon through the radiator and come back all the way out here in this end. And we'll put this end in a little dumpster here. For it to catch you know the oil that's going to be dripping out of it so that's a good way we can detect it uh let's see what else so we're going to probably do it that way just to go and siphon the oil pre ahead of time in there brand new oil we'll put our filter and everything ahead of time we're also going to get the thing to capture the magnet so as far as the instruction goes i think this just swivels the exhaust down so you get access to this area here uh which we're fine i'm thinking this is right here where the hose is drawn and this is probably where the radiator it looks like it's laying on his um sides you know I mean, right there on the flat side. So ours is a little bit more like this way. 
but we just extended this a little longer to this maximum uh, hose length. We took it out like that. So yeah, I think these are just probably universal. Whichever way it pumps out is gonna come back and forth anyway, so it doesn't really matter because it should matter because it can flip this way or that way. We chose to lay the flat side of that against the metal frame, which looks pretty good. Um, just wanna make sure that nothing is good protruding. I didn't think about it, but maybe, you know, these things are pretty sharp, but I think they're not. They're being supported by the frame only, and they're not super tight, whereas it's really forcing this to go back, so it's good. We don't want to actually mess with these fins. We don't want to nick it or damage it or anything like that, so I think they're pretty good. It's well protected. From the back here, we shaved it off, so make sure there's no metal shrapnel that's going to cause any harm. So other than that, that's the only thing I could think of that's a little different than what they're telling me. Uh, going back to these instructions, you know, just a little bit, a little bit, put a little bit, you know, whatever you guys want to use for loop oil. I'll just use the motor oil itself. I just kind of looped a little, um, you know, the rubber O-ring. So that's it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go start the siphon the oil here. Now we still have some excess gear oil in here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of empty it out. So let me go ahead and try to empty it out here. Let me pull this bucket out here for a second. All right. Squirt that guy in there. See that? We still got some gear oil in there. So we'll siphon a little bit of gear oil, mix with a little motor oil, ain't gonna kill us. You know, sometimes they actually put this in the transmission. Uh, a little bit here, so. There we go, we siphon much as we can out. That was it. Okay, and then we're gonna use this to fill it up with motor oil. We can clean them any excessive in there too, just to help with a little bit. I also wanna test out the different tripods, so. This is the other tripod I was thinking. Uh, this is with the clamp. This is the one I currently use right here, it's like a foam one. That'll let me down you know, a few times, right? It fell down. So this one just clamps on. So let me assemble this one. You can use this for your GoPro attachment or, you know, it's just universal. So let me go ahead and get this guy screwed off of here. I think I could screw it off. Can't remember, is it this way? No, this one. Yeah, this whole thing's kind of has to screw off from here. Or can it? It's interesting now. Oh, yeah, 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 I can. It just won't be able to attach off easily. So this is what I like about this. No one makes them. I don't know why. It's a very simple. I got this at Target, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. There you go. See that? And then you can squeeze this and it comes right off execution and you can carry this with you or, you know, when you want to attach back. Fortunately, this doesn't have it. So you pretty much have to hold the clamp down or you have to take your time and unscrew it. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the head off of here. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm using it right now. So how can I do it? Okay. So what we're going to do... <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and, first of all, let's get the one that we're targeting first, the source. Okay, there you go, see. I'm gonna unscrew it. There you go. And then I can, you know, say goodbye to this one for a second. And we're gonna try and use this guy to wear a clamp it. We'll twist him around, he's flexible. So we'll see how he does, you know. They, they, they bragged as a double clip. It seems okay, I mean, it, it has a little bit of strength in there, but, Let's put it to the test to see how useful it is. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and I can, it's pretty good. The gripping lap test doesn't seem too bad. And we're gonna go ahead and screw that on there. There you go, that was it. Simple insulation, right? All right, so let me go ahead and clamp this onto this phone here. And we can go from there. Yeah, I'm carrying it, this looks cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get focus here and we're gonna go ahead and get our tools, what we're gonna need. First of all, we said we're gonna actually clean this a little bit. Only thing about it, it won't let me sit. You know, everything new. So I'll have to figure out where to, I can clamp it. So I'll, I'll try to clamp it here, right? So clamp it here, it doesn't seem like a lot of strength. I'll clamp it here, you guys can see me try and clamp it. And then I can turn this swivel. Actually, it's not bad at all. Huh, I was afraid to try something new, but it actually turned out pretty good. You know, the idea is to make sure you guys get the best shot. And then stabilization, of course. So what I'm gonna do is clean this canister up a little bit. So here we go. So I'm gonna open this up, dump out whatever I need to dump out. See, it's, it's a little bit of gear oil in there. I try to hit, tap about to the reserve, but I'm going to have to dump it out now. Okay. We'll take our thing here and just kind of give it a good wipe down inside. Get much as we can out of the gear oil. Uh, 
careful. This thing can cut your, feel like a sharp edge right there already. So maybe what I'll do is get this guy in here. Just work him around. Now we're going to get our magnet tool too because I need to fish that magnet out of there um, for the Prima. There we go. There we go. Just throw that in there. We're, we're going to dump it all out anyway. All right. So let me get some more rag here. This is up quite a bit here. Clean it out. Maybe use this side. <laughs> Can't go that side. Yeah, I'm using our 17 millimeter open ranch here. Get the last bit of residue here, as much as I can. Okay, let's pull it out. There you go. Nice and clean. Not that much. Wipe this guy out too. And I just don't know how we can actually, I'm not sure, just, I try to bend it like this to give it a little bit more uplift before it goes down, but it really didn't, didn't do too much. So I guess we'll just keep it that way. Let me see if I can put pressure, there you go, look. Put pressure on here, this thing squirts out a little bit more for us, but not a lot, but more. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the pre-used one here, this is the lighter one. This has a little bit of quarter left, so we're gonna use that to, Tap this off with uh, motor oil. Just want to blow everything. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and fish this guy out here because I'm going to get my magnet tool real quick. And we're going to get really dirty here. Try to fish out that um, the magnet. Let me see if I can get smart and actually get it from the, get it from the outside of the container, right? Let's try this out. See if I can. Should be strong enough. We can. There we go. Look at that maggot right there. It's like I will see. You can't see it. It's like cleaning your fish pond. You know, those little thing right there. See that? <laughs> see if we can get him to climb over. <laughs> yeah. There it goes. I think it's repelling it actually. So it might be the other way around. Ooh. Yeah, that thing is just sluggish. I just don't want to, maybe I can hold him onto this. Look at that, he's repelling it actually. I'm chasing him on the bottom here. All right, so that means I have to actually get this guy a little swim in there. No, I didn't want to do it that way, but the aluminum won't be magnetized, but this will. That is just what's in there. Oh, there it goes. There you go. Kind of hold him in that corner there. Oh! Come on, buddy. Oh, man, where did it disappear to? There you go. Oh. Surprise, that magnet. Two magnets should be really strong, right? Because this guy's strong. Maybe the motor oil, it works a little differently. Allows you to slip more. All right, all right, not playing around. He's in the corner right there. I got him cornered and all, but shouldn't put this rag in there, made more work for me. Or maybe it helped me. It's kind of hard to. Come on. Oh, the magnet's been on there. All right, so I got the magnet right here. There you go, that's the magnet we were trying to get back from the Prima. So let's clean that guy off. But let's just go and get our cap out of the way too because when we dump this, we won't forget about the cap. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, yucky. All right, so a little bit more cleanup than we want it, but. No. Okay. Rip another piece of. Uh, 
Just kind of wipe it out. We'll strain this off and put it in a little bucket there. Empty out. Maybe it's not a good idea to put the rag in there. We'll just leave it on the surface. I just didn't want to get the cardboard. Oh, yeah. So this is the O-ring here they're talking about. Put some lube in there just to prevent it from cracking. In case it does, you can put some lube. I'm just going to put some more motor oil there. We'll keep the keep the moisture, I guess, in there. Okay, so this one's almost there. Leave that alone. Let's get our magnet and get that cleaned up. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this arm here. I mean, I couldn't do this with a tripod. So it's got a little bit more length. Okay, this is the one. Get cleaned up here. Okay, we can rub off all the old mold oil. It should be good. And if you really want to, you can spray it with some brake cleaner, which I'll probably do. Knowing me, I'm probably paranoid. Any kind of old residue still left behind, huh? Okay, so we'll go ahead and spray that with some park cleaner in a second here. Including my magnet tool here. Look at that, it went a stretch pretty far out. For this look at that it's still going it's almost a good like four feet yeah maybe i'm exaggerating maybe it looks like about maybe maybe three feet tops clean the handle but it's still a pretty damn good magnet okay so let's go ahead and spray some part cleaner let's leave this guy bucket here we're gonna actually keep this guy hanging so probably need a downforce perhaps so let's see what we're gonna do we're gonna probably wire him up this is what's great. I can actually tilt the angle. You can see the arm of it, but I can tilt him, spin it around. I think I might keep this. Okay, here we go. Come on, where are you? There we go. Put him in the bucket. We'll monitor it, make sure it pumps and drops the oil out. You guys can see what I'm doing, trying to hang this one hose. It's gonna hang them down like this. The oil, the oil will drop, and once we notice it dropping, then we know that um, you know, take it off. I have to take off this whole thing in order to remove. But yeah, you can see there. We're just so we're gonna hang them out like this. So we're gonna squirt some oil, kind of maybe, kind of a downforce. Go and slant it. We'll pick up this hose here. We'll put the filter and everything in there, ready to go. And then we're gonna tighten this down to you know a little good torque, make sure it's closed and sealed. And then we're going to watch this guy right here to see if he squirts oil in there. And then we're going to monitor to see any connections or broken or leaks of motor oil before the actual engine actually siphons the oil for us. So we're going to help the engine by siphoning it for us. Now, I would recommend this, especially if you don't use a decompression hose, because the air needs to be pushed out some way. And you gotta, you're got you introducing a, quite a bit of extra hose and air lines coming here before this gets filled with motor oil. So you might as well put it in now, because you if you don't have a decompression tube, how's the air going to escape? So over time, it's gonna be harder for it to try to siphon all the way over there because it, the air has to be displaced somewhere else, right? So if it doesn't have a way to get out, that's why our decompression tube will help for one thing too. It'll help siphon and get the motor oil running smoothly. Um, so so right now, that's what we're gonna probably focus on. Well, first of all, let me go ahead and get this guy's, well, is it just, yeah, these guys here. Let me get them sprayed on, ready to go, rock and roll. Clean them with some brake cleaner real quick, our parts cleaner. Okay. <sighs> Get my hands dirty again. Where is that? Uh, motor treatment. Glass cleaner. We saw it here, right? Didn't we? We left it here. This is what touch and protection. PB blaster. I mean, we can use some, um, maybe just W40 is fine too, but I'd rather just get the brake cleaner on it and get that over with. Might have been used it all already. Huh. I thought I saw it here. Oh well, we'll just hit it with some, you know, it'll leave a little lubricant behind anyway, but it's not too bad. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give it a spray. I guess WD-40, huh? And we'll wipe it down carefully. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that guy out. Ready for insertion here shortly. Going to follow the schematic there. 
All right, let's see how this thing stands on its own. It's on its own feet right here. Just gonna leave it here. Let's see if it can balance the camera. Yeah, it's not good for its own stand, unfortunately. Yep. So that means it always has to be clamped on something. So let's go and focus back. I'm gonna go and clamp it. Let me clamp it to a lower level here. Then I could tilt it. You guys can see me siphon this in shortly in a second. Let me get these guys clean up. We just sprayed some WD-40 to take out any uh, debris or rust buildup on it. Magnet's pretty clean. Okay. That one's almost ready to go. I give it a thorough clean, you know? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is prepare almost a siphon this. This is great, you can actually really flex it. Then you can flex this part too. Okay, so just keep an eye on that one. You're gonna, you're gonna see me pump some oil in here and hopefully it doesn't fall back down the same line. So I'll have to hold it in up incline position. So I might have to move and relocate this camera for a second. Okay, so just get this all, the magnet cleaned away. Easier to touch things when they're clean. Okay, so this magnet's ready to go. We'll keep it in this pan. And then let's go and clean the cap for future use. WD-40 does leave a little lubricant anyway. Um, it's not like alcohol where it dries it up. So a little WD-40, you can use that as a lube. Nice and shiny, our Prima. A little scratched up, I don't know how. <laughs> Maybe I was scraping with the other guy, fishing him out, who knows. But anyway, he's good to go. Okay, so he's good to go for future. Use him as a backup cap. All right, so let me go ahead and of course get the gunk out of my nail. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and test it by, um, first of all, I wanna show you what the default assembly is normally in your oil cooler cap. So let me see if I can move this guy now lower. Let's see if I can clamp him to this leg right here. Oh, yeah, he's not gonna sit comfortably there. Let's see, I can't, I don't wanna clamp him to things that might break off easily, you know? So I can clamp him like that. All right. We just have to see a little bit part of his leg. Now if I had it on a tripod, it would be indifferent. I could just easily. But let's see. Let's see if I can go backwards like this. Sorry, I'm just trying to get used to this new thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you guys the uh, basic here on what comes normally in an oil cooler uh, setup. Yeah, I can clamp into this thing, huh? And maybe use the weight of it. I think it'll tilt. Yeah, it'll, oh, actually, not too bad. Yeah, I'll use this as a base. So this will glide with me. There we go. How about that? Okay, so let's see where you see. All right, let me go lower a little bit. <clears throat> You guys are seeing that? Okay, great. Uh, so this cap here, this is not. This is pretty much your normal cap, what it comes with normally. And then you also have uh, something to compress it with. So I'm gonna open this up. You guys can see again what was in there. I put it. In, I put a symbol already pre-crushed in there. So let me go and open this back. Let the Lucy. It's going to be the same spring. There we go. It took a little shape with that nipple again, which is fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is show you what normally comes onto your your um, thing. Usually it's like this. That's it. This is normally is your oil filter system right here. That's all it comes with normally. You have your screen mash. You have a like a almost like a Christmas tree upside down. Uh, things to be able to fit in it because you can't fit it this way. So it only goes one way. The biggest base. So I call it upside down Christmas tree. And then you have this right here, your uh, cap. And what the cap does, it pushes this mash up into the engine here. So I'm gonna do it for you real quick here. See if you guys can come closer. So you can see the hole right there. Okay, so what it would be is, if you're just taking out your engine oil, 
and changing it. Sorry, like that actually. So it goes like upside down like this. So you got this cap going here, upside down Christmas tree. And then you got this thing here to push pressure on it. And then it will screw right here with a 17 millimeter socket. Okay, what you wanna do is you wanna hand tighten first. So kind of put some pressure and then twist away. See so when it goes in, then you can just apply a little hand tool. You don't really torque it much, maybe less than, to be honest with you, five foot pounds max. So you can see here, it screws in right there. Now the spring that comes with the NCY oil cooler, what that comes with, it comes with this gadget and where's the other one? Okay, it comes with this setup, right? But this setup right here is for your base. Okay, this is for the base. So the spring that it comes with, you can see it's not a Christmas tree. It's pretty much straight, horizontal. So what you have to do with this one here, look at that, the camera's rocking. You have to go actually put it in here like this and then you'll use your donor. I'm sorry, you'll use your, yeah. Uh, and then it comes like this and then you just push it into it like this, that's it. And then you have your banjo bolts here. So this is gonna be replacing your oil cap right here, this one. And that's the only setup that's going in there like this. So it has a D ring as well. You can see right there. And then it has this right here. And that's it. Uh, and now what, what you're gonna need to do in order to uh, use some donor parts from there is uh, this gonna come with this thing right here, this silver one for this base right here. And if I'm not mistaken, this one goes into the long hone of it. So this one right here will go inside this like this right here. It's aluminum. It's just almost like a spacer, you could say. That's all it's for. It spaces out. So instead of using a spacer, we're gonna use the magnet one instead. The magnet one's a little bit smaller, but it'll still do the trick. So this is a spacer for right here. So you just use your Prima, the one that we just took out. Uh, that was compressed normally with the spring. If you were to install the Prima one, you would actually add this magnet to the base of it. So let me sh show you if this was not a stock one, and it is a Prima one, but the cap is the same. But what you would do is add the magnet to it. This is how you would add the magnet to the Prima oil cooler assembly. I mean, uh, uh, your oil filter. So you see, this is your stock one. Let's say this wasn't Prima, okay? Your cap will look exactly similar, but it just might not be that shiny and nice like the Prima one. But you'll have the same setup here. The only thing you're doing is Prima adds a magnet to it. So the magnet goes right here under these, under this little groove here. It goes right there. It just sits right in there. You have to get it to perfectly because it's like made perfectly for it. There you go. See, that's it. They just add a magnet there to a little capture a little bit more debris from sticking and then you put this in here and you can still close it. Now the reason why this had nipple on there, cause you can see where the magnet, where it crushes the magnet into it. The magnet takes a little bit more space and these things are usually by default stock. They're a little bit more protruded outward. But since the Prima magnet takes a little bit more space, it smishes this screen a little bit and creates a little nipple looking. So that's fine. That's how we got the nipple pattern was actually cause of the, the Prima magnet setup. So if you notice here, I can still actually push it in it's gonna be a little bit more tighter, and then I can turn it. Be careful not to strip these. There you go, see, and now it's turned all the way in. And that's it, there's no wash or anything between, it's just sealed by the O-ring. And there it goes, it's, now, it's nice and sealed again. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, and we're gonna put the, the magnet into this one, and we're not gonna use a spacer because it's just too much. Okay, so we might, I don't know, I never really tried to use a spacer, but I think um, the compression might be a little bit too much though. Uh, so we're going to replace the spacer one with our magnet one from our Prima one. So we'll be able to capture more scrap metal. Okay, so I'm going to take this off because this is where our adapter is going to be now. And our adapter is going to change the spring. We're going to move the donor spring. I call these our donor parts from our stock. So the only thing we're going to take back from there is this whole setup right here. That's it. We're not going to use this cap anymore. So that one's going to be out of the picture. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put it like this and it's going inside this guy right here, all the way like that, okay? And then what compresses it down, if I'm not mistaken, oh, I'm sorry, the opposite, the opposite, the opposite. Okay, so here we go. So this one that's actually coming from here now. So you can see there, the magnet is actually sitting on the rubber, but you still can't put it this way, right? Because it won't fit, so you have to go this way. Okay, you still need a spring in the mechanism, and it's gonna go in like that. So now it's gonna push in, it's gonna hold your, it's gonna hold your filter in there, and the magnet's gonna capture a little bit more on the other side. You know, metal actually seems to pass through a little scrap more or anything like that. 
it'll capture it in there. Okay, now you have your D-ring already in here. So we're gonna close this guy right here. So this has O-ring, and this is all there is on the other side of it, really. Okay, so this is it, we're gonna close it. And then when we're gonna pump oil, same thing. You wanna screw it. This actually has a little bit more place for the actual the net. So if you actually install a brand new net, you wouldn't have the nipple effect uh, in using this canister here. It does look like there's quite a bit more room for the, the actual oil, um, filter to actually have a place to rest, but that's okay, it's not gonna ruin anything. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and spin it. Since these guys are pretty much connected solid to my hose, I'm just gonna spin my hose and it spins it as well. Okay, you wanna give this a good tighten down. Maybe I got five foot pounds the most. Careful, it's still aluminum. You're depending on the rubber seal to do its job. And I was gonna say, put some a little bit motor oil on the rubber seal so we can do that right now. So let me go ahead and, first of all, I could just fill this guy up here. Let me go and pour some motor oil in here. Anything that I, I wanna get off the ground because I don't wanna get dirty. So let me go and fill the motor oil here. And we're gonna be siphoning things up. There we go. Pour into our canister. Look at that, it's like almost like a yellow uh, honey color. Light yellow. Oh, I wasn't paying attention, I kept on talking. Now, uh, it's almost to the very brim. Look at caught it. So what we're gonna do now is try to get it back because I need to actually put the top back on. But in the meantime, what I could do is um, take this guy off and I guess I could dab a little bit on there. It's gonna be a little, actually, you know what? Probably the best thing to do is pour it first back into the canister, right? All right, lucky, lucky, lucky. All right, gonna have to. Get up here. Actually, it's, you know, it has a little volume, so it's not going to be like liquidy. So that's a good thing. Here we go. I'm going to tilt this guy down a little bit. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's good. All right, so all you need is a little bit spatical here. So now that I got him out a little bit, so I'm going to take a little bit of the motor oil and just kind of lube our, our rubber seal here. Let me go and take this back off. And motor oil is a pretty good lube because that's mainly what keeps your engine uh, from, got a little bit of my arm now. <laughs> there we go. So a little bit of motor oil clear lube there. Let's go and rub it on there. Yeah, if you want to, the oil ring is already out. You can take it out and just really lube it well, but it's good enough right here. So, keeps a little bit of the moisture in there because you don't want it. You mean you want to keep your rings dry to a point, but you don't want to like, you know, with the heat and everything, it creates a little bit more drier because if this thing cracks, it's the only thing that's going to seal your uh, thing. And then you can actually, once you get on there, you can wipe the surface off. So that's all we want from there. So I'm going to close this back. So oh, 